Let's say you are a firefighter. Specifically, you are a forest firefighter. So you spend long hours during certain periods of the year expending a lot of energy, putting yourself at risk to protect others. You're also vegan. Should your employer, the government, be required to provide you with vegan food, food without animal products? In other words, should veganism be a protected belief? Should vegans be protected from discrimination under the law? This issue has been brought to court in several different countries, and one case that got a lot of attention was this case in England, where the tribunal said, yes, veganism is a protected belief. But of course, different countries are going to come to different conclusions, which brings me to the firefighter example, which is a real case, not in England, but in Canada. Knopf versus Ontario, specifically the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. Adam Knopf is a veteran forest firefighter for Ontario with more than 15 years of experience. He's also vegan since 2008, so 16 years. He says his bosses were fairly good at meeting his needs until 2017 when he was stationed in an evacuated town to help fight forest fires. Dinner would be a spinach salad. It was just insane. I've been out there fighting fires for 16 hours and you think a spinach salad is going to cut it? This was in spite of, again, his bosses knowing what he eats. Again, they were already used to providing him what he needed and having filled out a food questionnaire for this trip, presumably to let them know, hey, here's here's what I can and can't eat. One day, his only source of protein was a single black bean, while on others, he was forced to go hungry after he wasn't provided with any food that was vegan or uncontaminated by animal products. After nine days, he began to feel physically ill and mentally groggy. Every time he complained, he said he was told they were working on it. When I first read the uncontaminated by animal products, I thought, okay, is he being like overly demanding? He doesn't want his food cooked on the same grill, that sort of thing. At some point, expectations become become unreasonable, right? So if that's what he's demanding, like maybe that's a bit much. And then I read this part about Adam witnessing a chef touching his vegan burger, Adam's vegan burger, with his bloody hands, presumably bloody from like a, a beef burger or something. No, that's no. On day 10, he lost it after his lunch again included non-vegan items and he was sent home and suspended for three days without pay due to his inappropriate, insubordinate, unprofessional, and aggressive behavior. He was also banned from fighting fires outside the province for the remainder of 2017 and all of 2018. Adam says his bosses have continued to retaliate against him and that this is discrimination because veganism qualifies as a creed under the Ontario Human Rights Code. He believes the government has employer should have provided him adequate vegan food and that he should not have been reprimanded when he demanded they do so. If he were Muslim and only ate halal food or Jewish and only ate kosher, they would have had to accommodate him, Knopf argued. One boss told him he'd bend over backward for allergies, but dietary preferences? Nope. Again, this was back in 2017. Knopf sued, I believe, in 2018. So five years later, we finally get a verdict. Knopf gets nothing and veganism is not a creed. Karen Dawson is the adjudicator in this case. She is one of the many vice chairs and she makes essentially two objections. The first is that Knopf never made his creed known and he does admit that while his employer knew he was vegan, they didn't really know what his veganism meant to him. He never made it clear that this was an ethical decision for him, not just a dietary one. Now he says this is irrelevant. It's irrelevant whether his creed was, you know, actually a, a philosophical ethical belief or a lifestyle one, but it really isn't. Lifestyle choices like diet and exercise generally are not protected. And if we look at vegetarianism, right, again, in England, veganism is a protected belief, but vegetarianism is not because it's considered a lifestyle choice. And for veganism, right, there are people who call themselves vegan, but they're really just plant-based in the sense that they eschew animal products only for health. And the fact one of his bosses, right, said that his veganism is a dietary preference certainly suggests they thought it was just a diet. So I think Dawson, Karen Dawson, I think she's reasonable to side with the government here. Adam's bosses couldn't know they were discriminating based on creed if they didn't know his creed to begin with. The second objection has to do with the definition of creed. Unfortunately, even if Knopf had made his veganism known to his bosses, the ethical nature of his veganism, 
the case still would have been dismissed by Dawson because she does not believe veganism is a creed. This is where things get really frustrating. She uses these criteria to define a creed. Creed is a belief that is sincerely, freely, and deeply held. It's integrally linked to a person's identity, self-definition, and fulfillment. It addresses ultimate questions of human existence, including ideas about life, purpose, death, and the existence or non-existence of a creator and or a higher or different order of existence. It's a particular and comprehensive overarching system of belief that governs one's conduct and practices. Finally, it has some nexus or connection to an organization or community that professes a shared system of belief. As Dawson points out, other cases have used this criteria as well when trying to define creed. However, the actual code does not define creed. The Human Rights Commission, the website does list these five criteria, but they only say that they're relevant when determining whether a belief is or is not a creed. There was nothing I could find stating that a belief has to meet all of these five criteria in order to be considered a creed, in order to be protected. In fact, again, the Human Rights Commission website says, organizations should generally accept in good faith that a person practices a creed unless there is significant reason to believe otherwise. And Dawson basically acknowledged acknowledges this, that this is not law, and yet she still treats the criteria as law. And because veganism does not meet all of the criteria, according to her, veganism is not a creed. So what criteria does veganism not meet? Well, if you look over this, I think it's pretty obvious it's, it's the God. It's the God shit. I find the evidence presented at the preliminary hearing demonstrated that ethical veganism addresses humans' relationships with other animals and the natural environment, but failed to demonstrate that ethical veganism addresses ultimate questions of human existence beyond this, or the existence or non-existence of a higher or different order of existence and or a creator. What a fabulous sentence. I love it. It's not too long. It's not too wordy. <laughs> existence or non-existence of a creator and or different or higher order of existence fucking kill me. One of the expert witnesses for Knopf, the wonderful Dr. Melanie Joy, she argued that ethical vegan calls into question the meaning of life, our place in the world and the cosmos, and how a compassionate universe can allow suffering. But Dawson was not impressed. She still said, no, this has nothing to do with the existence or lack thereof of a creator or a uh, different order of existence. I am unable to identify any evidence presented by the applicant or the two expert witnesses that ethical vegans derive spiritual fulfillment from their practices and beliefs. I have so many thoughts. So first on that last part, to be fair to Dawson, she can only go off of what evidence is given to her. And if it wasn't convincing to her that spiritualism is connected to veganism, then that's the way it is. But as a long-term vegan, and probably for many of you watching this, it's really weird to hear someone say there's no evidence for any sort of spiritual connection to veganism. I mean, how many times have we heard vegans talk about spirituality? Like it is a trope. I googled veganism spiritual, and these are just a few results just from the first page. But I do agree with this part, right? You you can be a vegan Christian, you can be a vegan Muslim, a vegan Buddhist. Veganism has nothing to do, nothing to say about a creator or a lack of a creator. The same with different order of existence, assuming that means some sort of like spiritual realm. You can believe in heaven and hell or whatever you want, the 10 realms in Buddhism, whatever that is, depending on how you practice Buddhism, either it's a place or it's just like a state of consciousness or something. You can believe any of that and still be vegan. It doesn't matter. Regardless, there's no reason to believe all five of these criteria must be met in order for veganism or anything else to be considered a creed. And there is no better example of this than atheism. While veganism fulfills all four criteria, excluding the creator one, atheism fulfills only the creator one for sure. Maybe a couple others, right? Maybe it's deeply held, it's uh, integral to one's identity, and involves a community, but comprehensive overarching system of belief that governs one's conduct and practices? No. I don't believe God, God's exist, is not a belief system. It says nothing about one's morality. You can be a sadist and an atheist. You can be a vegan and an atheist like I am. And yet, Ontario has explicitly acknowledged atheism as a creed. If atheism is a creed, then clearly you do not have to meet all of these criteria to be a creed. There is no reason veganism should not be a creed 
under Canadian law. If atheism, not even a belief system, is considered a creed, then veganism must be a creed. It's ridiculous. Now, obviously, something being deemed a creed, protected belief or not, it says nothing about the validity of that belief, right? Whether we're talking about Canadian law, U.S. law, whatever. And there was a case in Canada, maybe it was the Falun Gong one, however you say it, or Raelianism. It's one of those, I think, where the court specifically argued that that wasn't their job, right? To say that a certain belief is right or good or compassionate or whatever, it was only their job to decide whether or not it's protected, whether it's a creed or not. It makes the this case, the, the Knopf case, just so much worse, right? Look at the religions that are protected. Look at the, the Falun Gong. It's a cult. It's a cult that encourages hatred. It encourages bigotry, yet it's protected. I mean, most religions promote hatred to varying degrees, and they're all protected. But veganism, promoting nothing but compassion for others, reducing suffering, advocating for those who can't advocate for themselves, not protected. Because we're more inclusive, basically, and you can be Christian or Muslim or Buddhist and vegan, not protected. And talk about a comprehensive and overarching belief system. I mean, that's veganism more than virtually anything else. How many religions involve living your creed at every single meal? And not just religions. Again, I am atheist. Atheism has virtually no bearing on how I live my day-to-day -day life. I don't go to church. Okay, most people don't go to church. I knew like two Christians growing up who regularly attended church. Most people went like maybe Easter and Christmas. Myself and other vegans, we live our creed every time we eat, every time we go shopping. And it's not like protection means a lot for us. We just want access to vegan food. We just want fucking beans and rice. Like, <laughs> really? This man is serving his country. He is protecting property. He is saving lives at personal risk to himself. It is a dangerous job. And his own government can't give him fucking canned beans and instant rice. They can't instruct their chefs not to put their fucking bloody hands all over a vegan burger. Like, that's not even a, that's just a safety issue. What is happening? We're having the worst fire season in Canadian history. All bases across Ontario are understaffed. Not to pat myself on the back, but I am that guy they don't want to lose. And I did really, really enjoy my job. And again, organizations should generally accept in good faith that a person practices a creed unless there is significant reason to believe otherwise. Having nothing to do with God or heaven or hell or lack thereof, that's a significant reason to believe otherwise. While he waited endlessly for a hearing, he was told by the Human Rights Tribunal to document every time he was served non-vegan food. I can't anymore. I can't handle it. I cannot be given another hamburger and have to take another picture of it to send to them. And to top it all off, he's hated for this. Even these comments on this really nice article, I really appreciated this from the Toronto Sun. Thankfully, there are a couple people saying, oh my god, people are so disrespectful. But there are a lot of comments basically calling him a baby. Now, he is appealing it or, or asking for review, whatever you call it in this case. And I really, really, really hope that his lawyers bring up atheism because it's just such a clear example that in Ontario, we're not even talking about other provinces or other countries, in Ontario, you do not need to meet all five criteria to be deemed a creed. Ethical veganism is a comprehensive belief system based on compassion and respect for all animals. It is incredibly disappointing that the tribunal failed to protect ethical vegans from discrimination simply because their belief system is not centered around the existence of a creator. People who want to act compassionately don't deserve to be fired, shunned, or otherwise bullied. Again, it just makes it so much worse. You know, people who are going out of their way to eat this way, I know the media and certain people love to present it as like, oh, it's an eating disorder or something. No, most of us are doing this because we believe it's right. Not because we happen to grow up Muslim and so we're Muslim and we demand certain things because we're Muslim. Not saying that Muslims shouldn't be protected. Again, the law doesn't say whether something is right or not. That's, that's the same here in the US and that's fine, but I'm not the law. <laughs> and most religion is stupid. And the only reason people practice religion 99% of the time is because they grew up in it. The the vast majority of vegans, on the other hand, are making a conscious choice to be vegan. We are going out of our way to do the right thing. To tell us our beliefs that make the world a better place, by the way, they're not protected, it's so shitty. In happier news, because I do not want to end <laughs> on that, but you can tell I'm like 
It's upsetting. It's upsetting. In happier news, and in the same vein, a Danish court just ruled the opposite, that veganism is a protected belief in Denmark. Now, this came about because of a small kid, I think a kindergartner, couldn't get access to vegan food. Not only would the school not provide vegan food, but they could not bring their own food. The school denied them the possibility of bringing their own packed lunch. That's insane to me. I don't know how Denmark works. Maybe that's normal. I don't know, but that is awful. I did read elsewhere, I think from the Vegetarian Society of Denmark, they were the ones who brought this case to court along with the family, obviously. They did say there are other schools and like public sectors, hospitals and whatnot that do provide vegan foods. I guess it is on a case by case basis, but yeah, they did receive compensation and their legal fees are going to be covered. Now, that doesn't mean that schools, kindergartens in Denmark now have to provide vegan food. That's not what the ruling says. Interestingly, there is another case coming up very, very soon, I believe, involving a pregnant woman who was not given vegan food in a hospital, and she was told that she could, she could bring her own food. And again, the Vegetarian Society is bringing this to court as well, saying that it is discrimination. They did not give her what she needed to live by her beliefs while in hospital, again, public sector. If they still say that that is discrimination, I mean, that would be a pretty huge deal and would imply that hospitals, etc., need to provide vegan food for vegans. We'll see. And I do also want to say that discrimination, whether or not something is discrimination, is subjective to some extent, right? It is often heavily reliant on perceived burden to the employer and also just basic common sense. There was one case, I think it was in England, where a Muslim employee of a warehouse, they tried to cry discrimination at being like forced to handle uh, alcoholic beverages. And the tribunal was like, no, 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 that's part of the job, man. Likewise, I would assume a vegan suing like a grocery store for forcing them to handle meat, right? Like I would assume like, no, so that's... It's part of the job. You knew that before you got the job. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on this. What do you think about veganism being a protected belief? I'm sure some of you will say, no, it shouldn't be. Um, you know, again, I got, it, it was interesting reading the case, the Knopf case. Initially, I was more on Dawson's side because she presents the criteria and it's like, well, yeah, you know, that third one, veganism, it has nothing to do with God or, or lack thereof. So like, yeah, I guess she's right. But again, reading more about it and actually know that you don't have to fulfill all five and oh my god, atheism is a creed. Not saying atheism shouldn't be a creed, but like legal precedence, what the hell? Veganism should obviously be one then. It's just, it's so ridiculous. And then also reading that interview with Knopf and, you know, saying he was served one black bean. Oh my gosh. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so, so much to all of my members and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. They help support the channel and keep it going. And I do post two exclusive videos there, both here on YouTube for members and on Patreon for tier two members and patrons, one of which is a controversial topic of my choosing for the month, usually something that's not related to veganism or just kind of, kind of related. Something that would be maybe a little bit weird to post here on the channel. Uh, yeah, I will have that one up for February next week. Anyway, thanks again. New video soon. His Majesty the King. That is such a weird feeling reading shit like that. As an American, it just, oh man, it, ew, ew. We have lots of problems, sure, but like, at least we're beyond this. All right, let's see if I can get this right this time. I actually already recorded this and I looked so cute too. It was just one of those days and you think I would know this by now? I've been making videos for 15 years. You would think I would know never to save over the original file. Um, so the audio, I record via this and I have a lot laptop here that this connects to and I use Audacity. And uh, I did my little noise reduction and then did it again for some reason. I guess I just forgot. I did it the first time and then I just saved it. And it's, man, it's bad. It's so takes on that like tinny echoey kind of thing when you over 
reduce audio when you over noise cancellation something. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. So I am re-recording. It worked out anyway, because the original, I didn't have any of the interview in there with Adam, the uh, Toronto Sun article, which had a lot more information that I think was uh, useful. So uh, yeah, it worked out. Still, it's the worst feeling recording and having to throw it away or having corrupted footage or whatever. Oh, it just, oh, it, it hurts. It hurts so much. 